Today on Here's the Truth with Georgia Ford. I don't like people getting killed and I don't like people's cars getting stolen. Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison slaps two automakers with a lawsuit after the surge in car thefts in the Twin Cities. And while the country continues to talk about reform, a Minneapolis-based group is fueling a revolution by helping incarcerated people study law. Plus, buckle up for a joyride with soul singer Mayada. Here's the Truth starts right now. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm independent journalist Georgia Ford. We've heard the stories of parents having their car stolen with their children in the back seat. And it's situations like that which compelled Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison to take action against the two automakers at the center of it all. Kia boys, stolen car haul. They left my steering wheel lock sitting on the seat just to, you know, rub it in my face probably. We found the car, the Kia boys got it. A popular social media trend sparking an explosion of car thefts. I woke up Sunday morning to see that my car had been hit with the Kia challenge. Stemming from the Kia boys TikTok challenge, teaching people how to break into cars made by Kia. Mother and Hyundai. To walk out and see your car is gone, broken glass, bam. Prompting Attorney General Keith Ellison to launch a civil investigation, accusing the manufacturers of putting profits over people by knowingly selling vehicles that lacked industry standard anti-theft technology. Why was this an effort that you wanted to allocate resources to? Because I don't like people getting killed and I don't like people's cars getting stolen. I don't like police resources being sucked up by having to chase all these car thieves down, which they wouldn't have to do if the cars were not so easily stolen. So this is a basic public safety measure. Hi, how are you? This is my car. The city of Minneapolis reports over 2,300 auto thefts in 2022 alone. <laughs> and for St. Paul, nearly 1,200 during that same period. A more than 800% increase in Minneapolis an over 600% jump in St. Paul when compared to 2021. You see people running for their life? Carjackings also led to 13 shootings and five homicides in Minneapolis last year. Everybody knows that the, that the teenager, because it's often a teenager, who stole the car, that kid needs to be held accountable. Yep. But what about the people who make the crime easy to do, knowing that the car is easily stealable? Earlier this month, Ellison, along with Mayor Melvin Carter and Mayor Jacob Fry, penned a letter to Kia and Hyundai demanding they have a recall. Because even though about 96% of all cars have an engine immobilizer on them, only about 25% of Kia and Hyundai's do. I just wanted to tell y'all, if y'all got a Kia, please watch your car because this ain't no joke. Several counties and cities nationwide have made similar moves. But Minnesota is the first to take action on a state level. You know, somebody has to go first, so, you know, we decided it'll be us. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, I mean, it is possible that we can have some other states join in and to support the effort. An issue that many Minnesotans have dealt with firsthand. There have been hundreds of vehicles stolen, specifically Kias, right? Did you ever think it would happen to you? Living in Minnesota, no. America Gray says thieves broke into her Kia once and stole it on two separate occasions. What condition had it been left in? Oh my gosh, there's glass everywhere. Glass everywhere, the steering columns all ripped out, the wires are all ripped out. The second time though, there was like food wrappers, like all kinds of stuff. My purse was stolen out of it. Uh, my clothes were stolen out of it. All three of the incidents happened in Minneapolis in a span of about six months. Police were able to recover her vehicle once in Minnetonka and once in Brooklyn Park. What was that feeling like when you walked out? In your I actually laughed. I laughed. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was just like never. Like, not again. She was hit with a deductible twice. America says she had no choice but to turn her Kia in for a Chevy. And I really liked my car when I had it. It was just, I want to be able to go into a restaurant and come out and my car will be there. 
I don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, is it gonna get stolen? Is it gonna be there? How much is this gonna cost me? Would you mind showing us how exactly this is happening and if there's anything that car owners can do to protect themselves? Yeah, absolutely. Wilson Haley, who owns an auto body shop in New Brighton, says it can all be done within a matter of minutes. That is a phone charger, y'all. With a USB cable. They strip the, the plastic from the column so the ignition is exposed. Mm -hmm. And then it's so easy for them to get in there with right. the USB and start it. Because everybody has a USB cable. Everybody. Causing strain on the consumer's pocket. For the Dodge. And the supply chain. The glass is on back order. The, the ignition pieces are on back order. The column covers are on back order. Um, they just can't make them fast enough um, from, the, from the manufacturer. So, you know, these cars are going to be sitting here for a while. Do you think the automaker should be held responsible? Yeah, someone has to be, and it's, it's them. It's the flaw in their design. A flaw that brings people to his shop daily. People just can't believe it. You know, it's, it's happening on the hour. You know, people are just stealing them. You know, Joe Ryan, the police don't chase them. It's uh, something I haven't seen before. Of you are getting up and getting ready to leave for work, and not one, but both of your vehicles were broken into. Hyundai and Kia recently sent out press releases announcing the rollout of free anti-theft software patches for about 8 million models. Thanks, but you're a little too late. But America believes the move is a day late and a dollar short. And I actually recently got a letter from Kia saying they would replace the like ignition parts. And I'm like, I don't even own this car anymore. And you've already cost me a lot of money. According to a statement Kia sent us, they say they're deeply concerned of the targeted car thefts, but believe all potential lawsuits are without merit, adding all Kia vehicles are subject to rigorous testing. And according to a TikTok representative, they say the Kia boys trend is against their community guidelines and their behavior is not condoned. We've got to keep good companies good. And that means uh, making sure that we maintain a certain standard. So I'm disappointed that uh, Kia and Hyundai are making me sue them. They could just do the right thing all on their own. This is costing people thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. And even people like me that have spent the money already and not even to say like after you use your insurance for a claim, your insurance spikes. So it's a lose-lose for the customer. While at the end of the day, you still have us as a customer. So I just really think that they should do something monetarily to kind of make up for that. Still ahead, a Minnesota man freed himself from a life sentence by studying law while in prison. One of these gentlemen said to me, you know you don't have to die in here. He said, why don't you begin studying law? Pick up the law books and study law. How that experience is now fueling a legal revolution. And still ahead, a soulful joyride with my favorite Twin Cities artist. Black girl magic, we got our eyes. Black girl magic in our hair, in our skin, in our veins, in our hips. Art is impactful, intentional, and beautiful. We started showcasing our art together in 2018. The Tipton Hammond Studio is a reflection of the love we have for each other. More than just a gallery. Here, we celebrate the creativity in us all. This is Tipton Hammond Arts. Black owned businesses are vital for our community and our economy. Black Business Enterprises serves as an educational and resource hub for black owned businesses all around the country. We have grants available, one-on-one -on -one consulting, seminars on finances, how to manage your businesses, QuickBooks. I, I want people to understand that they're superheroes. They can do it all. They can, period. To learn more, visit blackbusinessenterprises.org. Welcome to El Tejavan. Thank, oh, thank you. We pride ourselves on using the freshest ingredients, just like our abuelitas used to. From our signature birria tacos to our fresh guacamole, there's something for everyone at El Tejavan. And don't forget to try our famous margaritas made from the freshest juices and best tequilas. Join us at El Tejavan and experience our Mexican restaurant. If you know someone who has been incarcerated, then you know it can be difficult 
to remain hopeful while serving time behind bars. But liberation can come in the form of education, a revolution that a Minneapolis-based group is working towards with their mission of helping incarcerated people study law. We're really trying to fundamentally, I think, transform the legal discipline at large. A program unfolding right before our eyes. Tell us a little bit about the legal revolution for people who have never heard of it, yeah. who are unfamiliar. What is it and why did you start it? I think the most succinct way to describe the legal revolution for us is, is, a, is a legal movement. The legal revolution, also known as TLR, is an American Bar Association accredited track. TLR is led by a partnership with Minneapolis-based nonprofit Allsquare and the Mitchell Hamlin School of Law. Allsquare really is about healing the harm created by the criminal legal system. Emily Hunt Turner, the organization's CEO and Allsquare founder says they're positioning themselves to provide currently incarcerated people liberation from within. You've mentioned several times that this system has caused harm. Can you elaborate? Yeah, I mean, I think, where do we start, right? I mean, I think from racialized legal outcomes that in and of itself, right? I mean, looking at the different responses that the criminal justice system has and outcomes that it has based on race alone. An initiative unlike any other in the Twin Cities. A movement to put the keys to the law um, in the hands of folks who've been most impacted by the law. One of the pivotal voices is Eliza Darris. Many of us who are involved are directly impacted. Uh, we have gone through various different legal processes uh, we have um, we have found ourselves in situations in which uh, we were voiceless. The Legal Revolution's co-founder and board chair. From my perspective, there isn't someone who has a better appreciation or a better love of law than someone like me who has had to utilize the power of the law to get a life sentence overturned on appeal. Before his eighth grade graduation, Eliza was sent into the prison system with a life sentence. I went to the adult prisons as a juvenile and it was difficult for me. A group of older inmates also serving life took notice. One of these gentlemen said to me, you know you don't have to die in here. He said, why don't you begin studying law? Pick up the law books and study law. And for the next 12 years, that's what he did. And we began having what we call ciphers, right? Uh, circles in which we would sit and we would have conversations around legal discourse. For Eliza, learning how to navigate the deep relics of law while behind prison walls sparked a passion and his ticket to freedom. So we really went through a process, a mechanized process to really understand the world of law. Um, ultimately, I was able to fight um, and and get my life prison sentence overturned at the state Supreme Court level, I articulated the legal theory that allowed for that to happen. People weren't clamoring after themselves in order to help me understand law, right? There was no law professors coming into the prison. There was no attorneys coming and saying, we believe in you. None of that existed. I had to break open the books. Eliza says his initial idea of TLR was rooted in his attempt to pay it forward from the older men that mentored him. Upon getting out here, I began doing a lot of community organizing and community work. And the idea then formulated, why not begin them earlier inside of uh, their incarceration so that it could be a continuation, not the three years out in there, and continue and finish through law school out here. But what we are attempting to do is make the road as smooth as possible for, for us to be able to put additional voices into the conversation, right? Yeah. My voice inside of the conversation at the legislature really helps to alter and change yeah. the discourse and the directionality of the conversation, right? Because I bring a different perspective. I think for me, both All Square and the Legal Revolution are a product of the most beautiful people I've ever met. There has never been a JD program inside of the prison system. In this nation's entire history, the ABA has never authorized or approved um, the type of education that we have going on inside of Stillwater and Shakopee uh, prisons in their entire history, right? And it's only done through relationships. People in Minnesota, and I think people across the country and the world, really do know that like something has to change. And there seems to be sort of an unspoken like, yep, this is a way to do it. I think there's just a fundamental truth that the premise of the legal revolution speaks 
that is some way, especially post-execution of George Floyd, just can't be denied. Now folks behind bars can apply to participate in the JD or paralegal programs to practice law. The organization says inmates in the pipeline can change the trajectory of their future. One of the things that they can do is help to ensure that um, people th that they're incarcerated with understand the language of the law uh, so they can mentor, uh, they can tutor, they can be the law clerks. Each prison has law libraries that all have law clerks. They can be the law clerk um, to really help people understand um, the argumentations that they need to make or the briefings that are coming to them. That some, sometimes stuff is really difficult to comprehend. It's a multifaceted approach to revolutionizing the way law is practiced. There is power in the law and there's healing that needs to happen in the law and there's no one better to lead that charge than those who travel through, you know, what, it, what it's like to be on the receiving end of the law. So for us, I think we're trying to flip that paradigm and make sure that the legal field is wholly represented because it never has been. We're not going to contain this revolution in Minnesota. We're going to strike this across the nation and then ultimately we're going to look to strike this across the globe. And still ahead, buckle up for a joyride with soul singer Mayada. A friend of mine like nicknamed me the people psalmist and I was like, ma'am, wait, can I use that? She was like, absolutely. Are you not confident in your smile? Well, we have a plan for you. Here at Code White Teeth Whitening, we are here to help you reach your smile goals. We're offering up to 70% off your commitment. Now that's something to smile about. Book your session today at CodeWhiteSmile.com and always remember to keep smiling. Are you ready to get in the best shape of your life? At Sir Boxing Club, we offer high intensity workouts that will push you to your limits and help you reach your fitness goals. Our gym is equipped with state of the art equipment and a family atmosphere. Experienced trainers will guide you every step of the way, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned fighter. Come join us today and start your journey towards a stronger, healthier you. To me, public functionary is the future. I think just this like rootedness in really early career artists, in emerging practices and emerging artists, it's sort of like this future looking moment. Public functionary to me has always been about artist support and providing opportunity and resources to artists, particularly artists who haven't had access to those opportunities in the past. Public Functionary is the place. Kobe Co. creates the scents and sounds for restorative self-care. From burned out to calm and lit, we hand pour each soy-based candle and create a playlist to match because we believe self-care is a whole vibe. Light, listen, and vibe. Shop our products at lovekobico.com. Today's Joyride is sponsored by Nail Partners. A sweet, soulful voice, familiar to many, is that of a Twin City singer songwriter and musician. In this week's Joyride, we learn more about Mayada's many talents. Mayada! Hey, George! Oh my God! <laughs> It is so good to meet you. Yes, let's do this. Mayada, you you're my favorite artist in Minnesota. Thank you. Thank I you. first saw you perform, I cannot remember the name of the venue. It's in downtown St. Paul. View Carre. Yes. Yeah, they closed down in 2019, but that was my home. Like, you I, killed it. Thank you. Your performances there were so captivating. Just no matter what they say, so block out the noise, hear the voice of God who made us well as he whispers to you, let it break through, and know your black is beautiful. Love it. Okay, Love it. well, I, you, you're an OG. I mean, I feel like a component of your music is healing. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. Like, where did, where did that come from? So I think when I started to make music, it was really important to me to like make something 
meaningful. It started off with helping other people process, but then it became like, I need also, I have a lot of things that I could process with this too. So that became a part of it as well. Who are some of the people who inspire you musically? Beyonce is huge for me. Like I literally have her tatted on my arm. <laughs> Love it. You're a true like member of the I, BI. Am, I, I am. <laughs> it's just like the level of vocal excellence that Sis gives. I don't want to be her. I don't do what she does, but I want to be like that level of excellent yes. in being myself. Yes. So we're at Breck. Uh -huh. Why is this place significant to you? I went to school here from first grade through 12th. I would just come into the chapel if it was empty. The piano was usually unlocked. So I would just bang on the piano and like sing my heart out. And when did you start writing your own song? It wasn't until I was in college, senior year of, of college, and I was kind of having a really rough time figuring out what to do next. I remember thinking like, I'm gonna hate myself for never trying. So right. I'm gonna have to give myself like at least a couple years and see what this music thing does. Once I made that decision, it was like a faucet opened. Like I, I just was writing all kinds of stuff. Can you sing for us? Yeah, I can sing you my favorite thing from my uh, most recent album. So tell me about this place. Yeah, Where so are we now? this is Redeemer Lutheran Church. Um, I don't actually go to this church. I've never gone to this church, but I have rehearsed. <laughs> You're like, wait, so why are we here? No, I know, random, right? <laughs> but I have rehearsed in this church for like six, seven years. Oh, wow. I, I've written a couple songs here. Um, I would just like go off on the keys and enjoy it. it it's just like a, a, the sanctuary has been a really wonderful space to like, just like it, there's a resonance. I feel like it comes across in your music too. A lot of your music really feels sacred. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's like funny. it's marinated in chapels oh. and sanctuaries. Oh, and thank you. Yeah. Tell me about the knitting. I learned how to knit in the fifth grade. There was an English teacher, shout out to Miss Carlson. She was not my English teacher, um, but she ran the knitting club and I dragged all my friends to it. and then I was the only one who kept up with it. You're cold with it though. Thank you. I mean, I would rock that. Before you go, okay. can you sing us one more? I can. Well, I was a little girl Learning agent for my curls And I tried to burn them straight Till a new reality broke through and settled over me They got a self love and made Thin or thick or poor or rich, or they call you a I'm talking to y'all if you're loud or shy when you read or write. You're dark or light, I'm talking to y'all if you're young or old or meek or bold. Do the telling or get told, I'm talking to y'all if you're on tiptoe or dropping it low. I got no rhythm to show. I'm talking to y'all because we got black girl magic. Oh, oh, oh. Got to the end of that song, so we love that. <laughs> thank you, thanks for jamming with me. Yes, thank you. Wait, seriously, you used to rap? Is it recorded anywhere? Yeah, it's deep in the archive. What was the rapper name? What was the rapper name? Miss Jean. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> 
period. Yeah, maybe on the next album. Okay, I can, yes, I can get, yes. get a 16. I'll get yeah. my people to talk yeah. to your people. That's the only way yes. I'm coming back. Okay. Other than that, I'm Noted. just... Today's Joyride is sponsored by Nail Partners, bringing a renewed approach to commercial real estate and urban planning. Thanks so much for watching Here's the Truth. For extended versions of these stories and more, head over to georgiafort.com. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next Saturday at 11. Coming up on Here's the Truth, a man punished for being a good Samaritan. Don't touch it, don't handle it, don't do anything with it. Why he could be facing jail time after turning a gun over to police. And a 12-year-old painter is cashing in on her canvases, how she's turned her art into a business. Plus, buckle up for a joyride with Brandon Tulick. My curly-headed queens from 2C all the way to 4C. I know it's our 2C sometimes, but I foresee a better future for you all. I see the wordplay. Yeah, you know, you a little said, bit. You said, I'm 2C, 4C, yeah, okay, you know what I'm okay, saying, you know what I'm saying. Watch Here's the Truth with Georgia Ford Saturdays at 11 a.m. on the CW Twin Cities. against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are on the rise. My simple solution to the problem was remove people from the scene and help them feel safer. In terms of the hate crimes, I think there is so much more work to be done. We really need to come together and tackle this issue as a community. My name is Gary Parker. I served as a Calvary Scout and a military policeman in the United States Army for 20 years. When I was a Calvary Scout, we had a young lieutenant that came in, great guy, but he moved on, got promoted to lieutenant colonel, went on to Afghanistan, and I was able to keep in contact. And I'd wake up one morning, go on social media, and there was that post you don't want to see. For whatever reason, he, he took his own life. Nobody knows why he did it. And if there's something that we could have done to prevent it from happening, safe gun storage can prevent gun suicide because it's that added step to get to your firearm that might just give somebody a moment of reflection on what they're doing. As a veteran, we need to be ambassadors to people that don't have the knowledge that we have. Anytime you're not storing a weapon safely, you're putting yourself and your community at risk. Service never stops. Protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan today for the tools and tips you need to protect that legacy. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. And so they need you to stand with them.